Today I am coming to you from the bathroom, but the topic in question is feeding chickens and uh, sort of ways to reduce the cost and potentially increase the quality of the feed that your chickens are getting. So this video is part of kind of a little mini series we're putting together on some of the efforts and some of the things that we do here and the things that we're trying here to help reduce the cost of feeding our chickens, but also give them a more healthy diet. And so in this video, we're talking about what is our base diet or the, the, the staple that our chickens get. We sprout grains. In particular, we sprout wheat because we've found in the time we've been doing this, which is now going on about three years, I believe, that we've really been sprouting. Prior to that, we basically fed either a dry scratch or pellets. But we found that you got really good gains for part of the year, i.e. growth of chicks and whatnot, but then the chickens just didn't seem to be as healthy. And that's a relative term, and that's just our observation. So we started doing the, the sprouted grains, and we've gone through various incarnations of this, well, some of you have seen this before because we have done some other videos on it, but here's our grain sprouting operation. So in the winter months, which of course we're in winter right now, we bring this in the house because we can't get the grains to sprout when it's freezing outside. And in the previous years, we've done this in the basement, but it was a lot of lugging water, etc. So as you can see, we have switched to doing this in our bathroom, which is why I'm in this room today. And these grains in particular that you see in these buckets are for larger livestock. But this is what things look like, basically three days worth of sprouting in our little system here. So this is pretty much ready to feed. This will go out tomorrow morning because I'm kind of midday right now. So I'll link the video up above of sort of how we set these buckets up. It's very, very simple. They're food grade uh, buckets. We use different colored buckets for different feed because then it's really easy to just keep everything straight as to what's going to who. In summer months, we do move this outside into the barn because we have running water out there and it's warm enough to do so. But for the winter months, we're stuck inside. So I've got my notes. Let's talk some numbers here. So first we're gonna go and I'm gonna show you sort of what we fill up. It's an ice cream scoop and we're gonna weigh that and uh, then bring you back for the rest of the discussion. Okay, so in typical fashion for us, we're gonna weigh this out. And uh, what we do for this base diet is we basically take four of these ice cream containers worth of whole uh, wheat. So we've uh, zeroed it and this is now, so there you go. It's two pounds, 12 ounces. So two and three quarter pounds in each one of these ice cream scoops. Technically the geese get a percentage of that and this is where our numbers are gonna be a little off. So bear with me on that. But on average, we're giving uh, the chickens about 3.5 scoops of the, the whole wheat. So about nine and a half pounds is kind of what it works out to. But I'll have to go back to use the 11 pounds uh, figure when we sort of scale this up because I don't really have a good way to take out the volume that the geese tend to get of this uh, from the buckets. But if you, if you use the 9.5 or nine and a half pounds as your, your starting point, we have 37 chickens right now in the winter, so we actually have two extra roosters that we don't need. They'll be leaving shortly and that number will come down. But that really was interesting because that worked out to what a quick Google search found was sort of the average of the layer needs per day. And uh, that's basically a quarter of a pound. So it's not a lot. It seems like a lot of food at face value. The next part we're gonna do is we're going to weigh our bucket at three days see what do we actually get for a gain because the big thing about spreading grains is a you are unlocking the plant right you're you're bringing it back to life for lack of a better way to put it when it's just a dry seed it is uh not got a lot going on it's in a stasis sort of and so you are getting more volume and uh we've never actually weighed this out so i'm very curious to see what that extra volume is so we're gonna see here on this bucket of uh sort of sprouted grain what we end up with here and i'll do the math after okay so let's see what this bucket of sprouted grain weighs 18.8 well as you just saw there the bucket with the grain in it ended up being 18.8 .8 pounds so we 
pre-weighed a bucket on a different scale because the big scale wouldn't weigh them at that uh, weight. The bucket on its own, with no grain in it, weighs one and three quarter pounds. That's not bad. That pretty much works out. This is a little rough, but to 17 pounds of food. So if you take the 11 pounds from the four scoops of uh, dry grain, we just gained six pounds of food weight here. That's substantial. So in one side of the fence, you could say, oh boy, our chickens are really eating well. <laughs> but at the same time, we had to remind ourselves they're producing very well right now. So then we get into the numbers and cents on this. Basically, we had to kind of go back into our records and see. So one bag of whole wheat, the last time we purchased it, was $21.75 Canadian. And that's for a bag that's 88 pounds. So that works out if you do the math here on... Uh, so if you do the math here on that 88 pound bag of whole wheat at 21.75, divided by obviously the 30, uh, 37 birds that we have, it works out to be $2.42 per day and basically lasts for about nine days. That's really not that bad when you consider right now we are actually getting out of those 37 birds, which doesn't sound great, but we are in the middle of winter uh, where we are and we don't artificially light and we don't heat the birds. We are still getting on average 11 to 12 eggs a day. So I mean, you look at egg prices, that two, $2.42 Per day to feed them that's not so bad. So as a base diet it's really fairly cost effective. Now the downside to this is it's not something we can produce ourselves. Essentially uh, we could never likely produce grain in this quantity to actually feed our birds uh, this diet. So this is where some of the other videos that you're going to see here shortly come into play of trying to reduce this base diet. Now if you look in here too you will see some round objects those are lentils. Now, I haven't cost this out 100%, but we do add lentils or chickpeas and occasionally black oil sunflower seeds to the mix, but they don't constitute a large percentage of it. It usually kind of ends up being maybe a, a cup, cup and a half max. Uh, the lentils are ones we purchased at the grocery store, the same as the chickpeas. And we tend to stock up on them when they go on sale because uh, they do every now and then get locked down or go on a sale price. But you can definitely see here the little tails forming. And as I say, this will sit here for another sort of half a day or so and uh, they'll just keep sprouting. And so therefore they may gain more weight. But we definitely find versus the scratch or cracked grain type stuff, the chickens eat this well i.e. there's very little waste. And in fact, the waste only tends to be the few percentage of seeds that didn't sprout. They're very good at picking out the, uh, the, the live sprouted ones versus the ones that didn't. And of course, here's the big advantage, folks, because uh, everybody's strapped for time and a lot of people probably would say, I'm not going to do this because I don't have the time for it. Realistically, it's taking me more time to film this video than it has to go through all of the sprouted grains that we do in a day. And you're saving some efficiency by doing this in the bathroom with the type of faucet that we just happen to have. It's very simple to fill it up and we actually go through less water this way than we had in the past when I used to carry them the buckets of water downstairs because we only have to put just enough to sort of cover everything well and uh, yeah we've definitely found that we've reduced the volume. Sounds kind of a weird thing to say but the big thing is to making this work is you have to keep it easy, you have to keep it simple, and you have to keep it accessible. So yes, we're making the conscious decision to do this in our bathroom, which seems like an odd thing to do, but if chickens and other livestock are bringing a lot to the table as far as the food that they produce for you, realistically in the grand scheme of things it's a very small price to pay uh, for having that food security. So we're almost to the point, as I'm talking to you, this is filled up and uh, then we just let it sit and we rinse and repeat literally the uh, entire process again tomorrow. So there you go, is that simple? One thing we will say too really quickly here at the end of the process is you're going to want lids because you don't want your grain to dry out. So you're basically treating this very similar to if you garden, 
how you would uh, sort of keep those seeds in optimal condition for germination. You're just treating this almost like a giant plastic bag or Tupperware container to keep them uh, nice and moist so that they'll sprout well. All right, so you've basically seen the process, and uh, if you've made it this far in the video, you're probably coming to the, I guess, more boring part. I'm not going to get too far into the um, feed quality of wheat for chickens. I mean, it doesn't take too much to find resources that basically talk about wheat being a common and fairly high quality food for chickens. But it gets interesting when you start getting into the sprouted grains because you can dig for them, but the the scientific data is just not there because scaling it up to a commercial level isn't super possible. Nothing is impossible, but the labor, etc. required is high because the one thing you do have to watch is you don't want those grains, you don't want any grains to sit in there and rot in the process. So in a five gallon bucket, very easy to control that, but you can see how scaling that up to a huge broiler produ production facility or what have you is just not, not possible. Therefore, the research is lacking. What I can tell you is everything I've gone through as far as values, etc., cost, is it's going to seem a little high, and we've gone a little conservative because, as I said, the geese that we have do get a percentage of this diet, but it's hard for us to actually calculate it out perfectly. Hard for me to calculate it out perfectly, we'll put it that way. But this base diet for us doesn't change no matter whether we have the 37 birds that we are uh, sort of overwintering or we have our, our grow outs in the summertime because we allow the birds access to outdoors. We actually prepare the same base diet, so we don't adjust this much, even though we have a lot more chicks. Like this past year, for example, we had 37 adult birds, but then we had uh, 42 chicks. So we had a total number of 79 chickens at one point, which is a lot of chickens, but we kept the base diet the same, which kind of goes to show you that allowing them access to those alternative foodstuffs, being able to forage, etc., goes a huge way to reducing your feed bill. But it's always interesting for us to look at it at the worst time of year because right now they can't go out and forage, they can't go out and collect other feeds, so you are stuck bringing everything to them. Now the other thing I will say, even though I'm not going into the nutritional value of, of wheat, uh, we've experimented with other grains, things like barley and oats, and although they do eat them, they're not a big fan of them, or our chickens are not big fans of them, and that's why we don't really include them as a big portion uh, of their diet because we basically found it's more economical to give them what they're actually going to eat than it is to try to get them to eat stuff that they're not going to eat. The interesting thing here is we are in this process of trying to find ways to reduce the feeding cost of our chicken flock. So we haven't quite got there yet with everything, and we've maintained this base diet as it is, and we supplement it with the other things you're going to see. Now, on days when we feed... Our, uh, our sort of cooked food. We do actually reduce this. I don't know exactly what the quantity is, but we kind of do it by feed dish and each group's a little different in size. So what we end up having is a surplus of this mixture, which we then go into the next day. And then there's ways to adjust for that, for that loss. Basically, there you have it, folks. There's something that works as a base diet, Definitely needs other substitutions because the wheat is not going to, even sprouted wheat, is not going to provide them everything they need. Hence why we are also looking at a lot of other alternatives. So stay tuned because uh, we have definitely got a few more videos planned of some very simple little ways that on a small scale, if you're willing to invest the time, you can actually reduce your, uh, your feed cost and you can produce uh, better quality feed for your chickens.